Good morning. Thank you to Roddy and the choir for beginning our worship today, and they're going to sing again later on. But welcome to worship on this first Sunday in Advent, and welcome to Dorna Cathedral, especially if you're visiting today. Welcome to if you're joining in online or on YouTube or the phone line. We hope you find the blessing that you need as we worship together. Um, so, there are quite a few notices again. Um, the size of the font gets smaller and smaller as the year goes on because there's so much happening. Um, but let's see. The Kirk session meets next Monday at 3 p.m. in the West Church Hall. Papers will follow shortly. There is a request for people to help with recording the service. Speak to Liz or Morag if you think you'd like to find out about that. Any filled Smarty Tubes can come back to church now. Um, and I think you can just pass them into the plates um, as you come in or go out. And they will be going in the direction of Palestine, or the money at least will be going in the direction of Palestine. Um, Margaret is looking for life and work subscriptions. Details are on the sheet there. Start East Highlands, which supports local families, are looking for toiletries and craft items, and these can be taken to the Dornock Hub. Um, Carols for Christian Aid is on Tuesday the 12th, so a week on Tuesday at 7 p.m. in the cathedral, and everybody is welcome. Donations at the door if possible. The Social Committee is inviting you to a coffee morning on Friday of this week, 10.30 to 12 in the hall, with all the usual pancakes and scones. Next Sunday, edible gifts on sale. Those sound good after the morning service, five pounds per bag. The choir you meet on Friday at 6 p.m., usual place. Today, if you haven't had a chance yet to visit the sales table, it will be out in the crossing um, and there are still Christmas cards and different goodies for you to pick up and take with you and to support the cathedral as you go. Um, you'll see maybe some little posters and things about the place. There might be one down here, maybe near where you're sitting. Those are part of a little trail that you can do if you have little ones, children, grandchildren, um, and they lead to a hidden place where there's a suite and a little invitation to come to the Christmas Eve um, morning service. So if you've got little ones in your family or neighbours or whatever, tell them about it and encourage families to come in and have a look. Next Sunday from 2 to 4, we're trying something different, a, a kind of drop-in informal event at the hall where there'll be snacks, um, opportunities to engage with the Christmas story in different ways and just to come and enjoy company. And it's for anyone, whatever age you are, whether you're on your own or in a big family, it's for anyone to come along and just enjoy being in that space. Um, Christmas Eve, I'll just keep going. Um, the family service at 11 as usual, and then the watch night service with carols from 11 p.m. And then Christmas Day, hooray, 10 o'clock, um, back here again. Um, and what else? Christmas high teas. The Guild invites you to a Christmas high tea with entertainment this coming Tuesday at 2.30. Bring a friend and enjoy the afternoon. And is this the last one? We'll hear something very ordinary. Help would be appreciated to shift a pile of leaves at the West Church Hall Friday or 12, at 12, I think that says, after feasting on pancakes and scones. So come along to the coffee morning and get your spade out. I think that's what that one's saying. Um, so these are all the notices today. Advent is here, marking the start of another sacred year and so we come with open hearts, open minds. We come ready to let love confound our cynicism and leave us wide-eyed and wondering at the mystery of it all. God, baby small. God needing to be held. God trusting us with the love of heaven. Let us pray. Living God, we can scarcely believe we are here again, dusting down carols, listening for angels, 22 sleeps and counting. 
And yet here we are, Lord, another year turning. The invitation to wait again for you who reveals yourself not in power, but in vulnerability. Bless our waiting, Lord, that it be restless and wriggling as a baby. Bless our waiting, Lord, that it be hopeful and unafraid. Bless our waiting, Lord. Make us ready to receive you, to love you, to worship you with all we have and all we are. Amen. Our first hymn today is number 153, Great is Thy Faithfulness, hymn 153. go on worshipping in our prayers and we say together the Lord's Prayer which you can find on the back of the service sheet. Lord, perhaps we can admit we are conflicted people. We long for peace but hold on to grudges. We long for freedom but let judgment ensnare us. We long for love, but hide behind our defenses. We long for joy, Lord, but cling tightly to our fears. 
Lord, save us. The prayer we dare as this new year unfolds. Save us from the selves we are when turned from you. Lord, save us. As the year turns, turn us to, to listen for you, to look for you, to learn again who you are for us and who we are called to be because we are yours. Lord, we praise you for you are making of our lives something good, something beautiful even. We praise you for you are making of our hearts a sheltering place for you who is our source, our help, our unbinding. Gracious Lord, we praise you and we pray together words Jesus taught his friends and bids us live today, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and from our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I was wondering if you can remember receiving school report cards back in the day. I remember receiving them, and I remember many years later writing them, and neither was pleasant, going home with the envelope not knowing what was inside, <laughs> or writing them and hoping that you would bring encouragement and nothing less. Does anyone remember were there recurring themes in reports? Were there things teachers said about you? Oh, could do better. <laughs> that was a stock phrase, wasn't it? They don't say that anymore, thank goodness. They don't say much anymore, actually, I would say, <laughs> is my experience. Anybody else? Yeah, Tracy. Doing the, the bare minimum, coasting along. <laughs> that sounds like a good ride to me. Coasting along. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I was asking my mum because I can't remember. And there's a box, but it's up in the loft. And who wants to go up into a cold loft in December? But I think my primary seven one at least said, this girl is a wee bit of a chatterbox which you might believe, but I'm actually quite quiet, given the choice. And there was another one, primary five, that said, we'll never do any good in maths. Which was rather fatalistic, wasn't it? Help me learn, I should have said. But that teacher did give me some tuition outside school many years later. Maybe some of you had something like, pay more attention. Mm, yeah, pay more attention. It's tradition on this first Sunday in Advent to think not only of Christ coming to us as a baby in the past, but to Christ coming again as promised some future day. And so we're taking today to chapter 13 of Matthew's Gospel and to descriptions or maybe allegories of Christ's future coming. And you'll hear that command, pay attention. Don't get caught sleeping or distracted. Keep awake. And it's not so much a reprimand, I don't think, as a call or an encouragement to action. Though 
continue to tease that thought as we go on worshipping. For now, we are going to light the first of the Advent candles just before we light it. Um, we, we light four all through Sunday and then the one in the centre on Christmas Day. Um, and the first one, there's a tr- tradition invites us to think about the word hope. And that's what we're going to do today and all through the rest of the service. And I've asked Faye to come and help me very short notice. Yeah, that'd be fine, that'd be fine. Um, With a short reading from a book by John Rodell called Hey God, Hey John, What Happens When God Writes Back? And this one is called Candlelight and it has a line in it you'll hear which goes, don't surrender to darkness. And I think in a way that may be what the writer of the text that Anne will read for us shortly is trying to say as well. Don't surrender to darkness, because hope is, hope always is. Hey God, I'm going to give up. Don't surrender to the darkness. I think the mic's not on, is it? Will we just switch it on and we'll, then everybody can hear it well, yeah. Can we plugged in. Hmm. Okay, we'll just we'll just go back then. Hey God. You have to do it really big, yeah. Do you want to use it? Hey John. No, not one. Hey God. Hey John. I'm going to give up. You can't. Don't surrender to the darkness. I'm sorry. I just can't hold on any longer. Then let me hold on to you. I need you. I will lift you up like a lit candle. What good will that do? You can become a guiding light for somebody else who feels the same despair as you do. You can be an example of how a single light can survive a dark night. You can show others that if you can hold on, so can they. I'm too weak to be of any use. Even the faintest of light can be all another person needs to be reminded of how a glimmer of hope can outlast any gathering shadow. You need to survive so you can become a beacon for somebody else. And then what? Then that person will become a light for another person, and so on until the entire world is lit up by billions of soft little candles. Listen to me when I tell you this. There is nothing more contagious than hope. Thank you. Sorry for all the bangs and knocks. And I'll give you this to hold when it's time to do the reading. Listen when I tell you this. There is nothing more contagious than hope. I'm going to ask Sheila to come and to light the first of our candles, which represents hope. And then I'll share some images for hope. And you might want to add to these yourself. Maybe have a moment to think later on and So here we are, reflecting on hope. Hope, a flame, flickering in the darkness. Hope, a song, rising from the ashes. Hope, a window open to the breeze. Saviour, 
waiting to be born. Let's sing just the first verse of hymn 284, and it might be new to us, I'm not sure. So maybe we'll sing it two times, is that okay? And we'll add to this as we journey through Advent, but for today, just the first verse, and we'll sing it twice, Hope is a Candle. The reading is from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 37, and it's on page 65 of the New Testament section of the Pew Bible. The coming of the Son of Man. In the days after that time of trouble, the sun will grow dark, the moon will no longer shine. The stars will fall from heaven, and the powers in space will be driven from their courses. Then the Son of Man will appear, coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He will send the angels out to the four corners of the earth to gather God's chosen people from one end of the world to the other. The Lesson of the Fig Tree let the fig tree teach you a lesson. When its branches become green and tender and it starts putting out leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you will know that the time is near, ready to begin. Remember, that all these things will happen before the people now living have all died. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows the day or hour. No one knows, however, when that day or hour will come, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, only the Father knows. Be on watch, be alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It will be like a man who goes away from home on a trip and leaves his servants in charge. After giving to each one of his own work to do and after telling the doorkeeper to keep watch, Watch then, because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. It might be in the evening, or at midnight, or before dawn, or at sunrise. If he comes suddenly, he must not find you asleep. What I say to you then, I say to all, watch. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
thank you. Should have perhaps said at the start of the service, thank you to the junior boys brigade who came and decorated the tree the other day. Um, maybe we can keep all those groups that are working hard and um, sharing the Christmas message with young folk in mind um, as we go this week. Let's come to God with our prayers for ourselves and others. Let's pray. Lord, as Christmas nears, behold in heart and mind those who dread its coming, those for whom hope feels distant, Parents wondering how on earth the money will stretch. Those bereaved, wondering how to bear their loneliness. Those for whom Christmas brings unwelcome memories, wondering how to face the day. Those whose country is at war, wondering only how to survive. Christmas is for the kids, we say, but Lord, how wrong we are. We need only look at those whom you chose to bring in the first. A teenage mother who surely heard the whispers behind her back, the lies, the gossip. An adoptive father, wondering what on earth he'd signed up for, whether he'd been played for a fool all along. Those who are working as they always must, outside the margins of plight society. Older folk who waited their whole lives to see a promise fulfilled, the thing they'd wished for, a reality at last. Christmas is for all, but Lord, how much more it could mean to those who dread it. If only they, if only we would realize it's a story of heaven come close, especially to those who feel in some way failed or forgotten. If only we would realize hope is ours to grasp to, Lord, as Christmas comes, reveal to these ones, reveal to us its truth, its truest blessing. May we find our place in this story of your coming. May we find you see us, find you with us, revealing yourself even in our brokenness. Lord, we pray especially today for those living as though oblivious to your desire for all the world to know your peace. Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Palestine, all those places where there is unimaginable violence and unspeakable suffering. May the Prince of Peace be present. May his peace be theirs and soon, for it is too sore this fighting, too deep this pain. Lord, as Christmas nears, perhaps we can pray with the church around the world and with all your people that we be light to those who see only darkness and hope to those who feel all is lost. Lord, may we be loved to those who need convincing still how beloved they are in heaven's heart. All this, our prayers spoken and unspoken in hope for the world's sake. Amen. going to sing again. Um, this might be a new hymn to some people. Um, View the present through the promise Christ will come again. It's number 479 and it's worth, worth the learning. Hymn 479.
Trust is by the deepening darkness, Christ will come again. Lift the world up of its grieving, through your watching and believing. In the hope that's hopes conceiving, Christ will come again. the present with the promise Christ will come again let your daily actions witness Christ will come again let your loving and your giving and your justice and forgiving be a sign to Christ will come again. Make this hope your guiding promise. Christ will come again. Pattern all your calculating and the world you are creating. To the advent you are waiting. Christ will come. As we've said, it's tradition on this Sunday in particular, as we think of Jesus coming to earth on the first Christmas, to look forward to the time promised when Christ, as we've been singing, will come again. And so we're given this text from Mark's Gospel, which some in the far distant past have called the Little Apocalypse. Looking back, whenever I used to read these words or hear them in church, they would have me quaking in my boots. Now they just evoke so many questions in me. Now I see the writers, the, the question the writer was asking, the contradictions the writer was living with. Now fear doesn't get a look in. First, we're faced with gloom and doom predictions. Talk of suffering and darkness and disaster. And this image of the Son of Man, by which Jesus means himself, coming to earth, not so much sneaking in as the first time round, but coming in the clouds, an image of power and glory. The Gospel writer is, it has been said, leaning into Jewish apocalyptic literature to find other examples of this, you can look back the way toward the book of Daniel or forward to the book of Revelation. It was meant, it is said, to be a way of inspiring hope, fearsome though it sounds, a way of saying God has not forgotten us. All the troubles we face now are not all we will see. Christ will come again. It's what Jesus promised his followers that he was going away but he would come again in fact he told them he would be right back and so the first followers lived with a second coming in sight but time passed a year a few years a decade then another the stories told of Jesus now were not so much being told by those who had known him as by those who'd known those who'd known him. Barbara Brown Taylor in her book, Home by Another Way, writes, the only reason we have gospels at all is that someone finally worked up the nerve to say, you know, there aren't that many eyewitnesses left. We really ought to get this stuff down in paper. Perhaps another reason is that someone finally worked up the courage to put out there the thought 
maybe Jesus isn't coming back soon after all. The question, the contradiction is there in the text in front of us. This generation will not pass away until all these things have happened. And then a line or two further on, about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Mark was writing to a people who were very probably frightened and tired of waiting. A people wanting to know, was this delay part of the plan, or had God forgotten them? As Brown Taylor puts it, people who desperately wanted to know was Jesus really coming back to pull them from the edge of the abyss? Or were they just going to hang there until their fingers gave out and they fell into the mounting pile of bodies at the bottom? Mark's 13th chapter was, I guess, an answer to this question. And putting two contradictory statements together, I'm coming right back but God alone knows when, was as much as a writer could manage. And 2,000 years on, we live with that tension, that question, is the delay meant, or has God forgotten? And perhaps the best we can do is to try to do as the gospel writer hoped for those to whom he was writing, that they, that we focus on Jesus' advice about how to live the question, not to surrender to darkness, but to watch, to be alert, to keep awake. What does that watching, that being alert, look like? What does it mean to keep awake? Perhaps it is not surrendering to darkness, but looking for signs of hope, living out the hope we find. Perhaps it looks like making the world in this space between Christ having come and returning at some unknown point, a more loving place. The poet Emily Dickinson described hope as the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings a tune without the words and never stops at all. Perhaps as Advent unfolds, we can commit each of us and together to hopeful living, to loving and to giving. Perhaps we can remind the world by the way we are that what is seen is not all there is, that there is reason to hope. A flame flickering in the darkness, it is you. A song rising from the ashes, it is yours. A window open to the breeze, the possibility, the call to life fully alive, all are yours. All glory to God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be evermore. Amen. Our offering is going to be uplifted and maybe as it is, you can go on thinking about your images for hope and the hope that you will take with you as you leave here today. As the offering is brought forward, we're going to sing the last verse of number 305 in the bleak midwinter, the very last verse.
Let us pray. God, who never forgets us, but is faithful to us always, we are glad to give this offering to you, that it might help us keep the Christ light shining, bright for all to see. And as we begin this epic journey toward the strange and familiar story of your coming, we pray you help us to look for signs of hope and to live faithfully for you, the hope that is in us, until all the world knows love is here, love will come again. Amen. If you're able to stay after the service today, there is tea and coffee um, for you to enjoy. Thank you to those who have provided that today. Our final hymn is number 543, Longing for Light, We Wait in Darkness. Hymn 543.